I want. I don't want to use a fine tip marker because that's the same as using a pencil. I mean, this big honking Sharpie. So, when creating a pattern, a blouse pattern, by tracing your hand, first, <laughs> first, don't forget to drink water. <laughs> Thanks, Streamlabs. I'm gonna take my make sure you don't have rings, first of all. I just had to take a ring off. But yeah, all you want to do is put your hand down on the paper and spread your fingers wide. Why would you? <laughs> and for the pattern, you also want to know and make sure you know what shape you want. Do you want to do a full glove pattern or do you want to do just a fingerless one or some other thing? We're going to do fingerless. So with your pencil, you want to trace just <laughs> this is gonna be so weird because this happened with me so you don't want to trace your hand so that the point of your pencil is close to your finger you don't actually want to get close to your finger when you're tracing the pattern that was my mistake you want to kind of trace it badly in a sense so kind of just loosey-goosey draw around your hand as it's spread. And you also want to just make sure you mark where your wrist bone is. Mine is down here, right at the bottom of it. And since I'm making fingerless gloves, I'm going to make a line Make a little dash line right above my knuckles. And there you have a traced hand. It's the same process with a marker, but with a marker, it's a little bit, the rest of the steps are a little bit easier. So with a marker, same thing. Put your hand down um, and trace your hand. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what which side of the marker I want to use because this is a chisel a chiseled tip one, so it has a chiseled edge. So I'm laying it down to where the slant is away. I don't know if you can see the slant, but I'm making sure the slant is away from my hand so that I get more of this line on the paper. So put your hand down. And this is not even a good marker. <laughs> this marker is dying. And trace your hand. We can mark where my wrist line is again. Mark on top where my knuckles are. And there you have it. You have a pattern. <laughs> Not really. You just have your traced hand. Now you can see the difference between how thick the lines are. This is actually very helpful. Having this slightly thicker marker line. It's about a sixteenth of an inch, and that is like the perfect seam allowance that you would want away from your finger. It's about three sixteenths of an inch. So, I'm gonna move this marker one out. When you're making your pattern with pencil, you have to add that six, that one sixteenth of an inch of ease. 
around your fingers just so that it makes it it just gives you a little bit more room and it's not just like clinging really close to your fingers that's the mistake that i made on my first few attempts with making this uh type of glove pattern by tracing your hand it's not putting in the ease yes you need ease so with the paper pattern when you uh trace it with a pencil gotta add ease so i have a really small like six inch ruler that's about an inch wide that is broken into like eighth eighth of an inch squares and inch squares and then each line is a sixteenth of an inch so I'm drawing in a six of an inch seam allowance uh, around my fingers and essentially around the entire hand. It's just easier to have that 16th, that one sixteenth of an inch seam allowance around the finger. You can use a ruler. I like using a ruler to get like a more precise measurement, but you can also kind of eyeball it. It's, I think one sixteenth of an inch is about a centimeter or even half a centimeter wide, um, if I were to say it in metric. Um, I hate that the United States does not use the metric system. <laughs> yes, exactly. You don't want to make them too tight, so the ease is 100% critical. Absolutely. It is needed, needed, needed. And it's this is a step that isn't really talked about when making these kinds of patterns because most people don't realize that a lot of clothes that we wear naturally have ease in it. So that was the biggest mistake I made when trying to make this glove pattern before. I didn't know I had to put the ease in because I wasn't told. <laughs> I wasn't told I need to put it in. Damn. This drawing in of the ease is more important when you are doing a pencil tracing. Like I said, you can trace this pattern with a marker and it will go much faster. But I'm just showing you the two different options that can be done since you can do it with a pencil or with a marker. Either way, either one. Like if you were also, if you were to also use a pen, it's about the same as a marker. I mean, it's about the same as using a pencil where you would have to add some amount of ease into it yeah in my beginning years of making cosplay gloves yeah i did not know about ease and i literally learned about ease in grad school <laughs> um not grad school undergraduate in my undergraduate program that's when i learned about ease and like oh that's what that is i see So drawing it in, drawing in my ease, doo 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 doo. Cool. I'm just making the line a more solid line instead of dashed lines, just so that's a little easier to see. Because I'm probably going to make some more dashed lines. I should use different colors. It's fine. It's fine. All right, I've drawn in my ease on my pencil one. I won't have to do that on the marker one. So thank God. So we can move on to the next part. So now that I have drawn my little lines of where I want my finger holes to be, now I'm gonna use my ruler to straighten that line out and make sure that it's a straight line from one side to the other. So we're gonna 
draw in our line for our finger. I can't believe that Laro Design is fucking following me. Laro Designs is a very great artist and I love their work. They're like my best friend. I adore them. Okay. I'm gonna draw in where my sleeve is gonna my, my glove is gonna stop. And here we are. We're almost there. Can you believe it? We're almost done with this pattern. It's that simple. <laughs> so now that we drew in our ease, now we can add our seam allowance. So typically the seam allowance for gloves are really tiny. It's typically a eighth of an inch small. And that's really small. Um, but because you don't want um, a lot of seam allowance in between your fingers to begin with anyway. That's the reason why the areas around the fingers <sighs> Ooh, excuse me, have a very small seam allowance. When you get to the wrist area though, that is where you could add a little extra seam allowance. Um, I usually go as big as a quarter of an inch I usually don't go any higher. So um, between the fingers are usually one eighth of an inch. I think that's about two centimeters, maybe one centimeter, maybe one. <laughs> and um, one fourth of an inch is about as big as I will go. And I usually only do like a fourth of an inch towards my uh, wrist area and this I usually do a quarter of an inch from like the knuckles the knuckle of this part of my hand downwards and a knuckle from here downwards is usually at a quarter of an inch so let's draw in our seam allowance like I said I'm gonna do an eighth around the finger so I'm going to do little dash lines again. Dash lines. And I'm trying to kind of follow the shape of my hand as well. And just to specify, if it's not clear, you're drawing your eighth of an inch seam allowance. from the one, from your ease line that you drew in, if that makes any sense. So we traced our hands, we made an ease all around everything, and then from that ease line that we drew, we're adding an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So in total, we're adding three sixteenths of a seam allowance to the whole, to the whole hand, but trying to find three sixteenths on a ruler every time is very hard for my eyes. So it's just nicer for me to see the ease line and then know, oh, that's where my stitch line is going to be and that the dashed lines that I'm making are my cut lines, the, cut, the place where the whole pattern is gonna get cut. So, I add seam allowance to the tips of the fingers as well. Actually, I want to go below. Wait, what do I want to do? Yeah, since I want my knuckles in this pattern to be visible, I'm drawing a seam allowance, a fold line on the bottom, if that makes any sense. Drawing my eighth of an inch seam allowance around everything. And yeah, it gets really weird. Especially at parts where the fingers kind of touch and meet. That's perfectly fine. You want that. You want the finger lines that you draw to essentially meet. Since they will be cut out anyway. It gets heckin' weird. 
and I will show you in a in a second. Let's see. You see how these dashed lines that I drew kind of like blend into each other? That's what you want. Because when you end up tracing the pattern. It just ends up looking like this. You end up just having the line of where you need to cut just there. So drawing more of my eighth seam allowance all the way around. Eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch. Now we have our eighth of an inch drawn all the way around. Woo! I'm going to add my eighth of an inch on my fingers. That's going to be my fold line. Eighth of an inch fold line. And I do a quarter of an inch at the bottom of my glove because that's going to this can be anything at the bottom you can add a cuff towards the bottom you can add even more fabric so that you actually have a full length glove you can put just uh, elastic around that edge and just have your glove stop right at your wrist lots of pl plenty of options for you to play with when you get to this part of your glove. Lots of fun stuff. So what I'm doing now is just drawing a line from the bottom of where my finger actually ends up to one of the lines that I drew. So it looks really weird, but essentially these two fingers are together. When I draw my line from here up, let's see here. Oh, this one, this, this one's pretty good. Yeah, trying to get all of your fingers is really hard. <laughs> Especially if you're trying to draw a straight line. It's pretty tricky. Because our hands aren't really straight lines. <laughs> it's very interesting. Ooh, this one's curved. I mean, I'll draw it curved. Why not? I'll draw that one curved. It looks a little confusing now, but this is why I end up using tracing paper when I do my patterns like this. So what I can do is just trace all the lines that I want and essentially have my finished pattern with the seam line with the seam allowance already added into it. And then I don't have to like redraw the seam allowances again because I already have everything that I want mapped out here. So I pretty much just draw all the lines that I did. Well, not all the lines. <laughs> the last line that I drew, the dashed ones. Because the dashed line that I drew is my cut line. Draw that out. I want to make sure I know where my finger ends, so I draw in that. Pretty much connecting all of my lines here. 
couple of the lines that I drew. And you can straighten out your pattern at this point too, I think. Like there are just some lines that work a little bit better than others. And all that can be fixed right here. Ooh, I want to make that a straight line somehow. <laughs> Aha! There you go. That's how you become a straight line. Drawing my seam allowance. And there it is. There's the glove pattern. Like, that's literally it. It's done. The pattern already has all the seam allowance that it needs already. The only thing that I would do is just mark, like, um, different placement things. Like, these lines that I drew here are fold lines. So I would write like fold in between that section because I know I want to fold it. And this part is just a seam allowance, so I just write SA for seam allowance. Another thing that's really important when marking uh, patterns is your grain line. Um, hi! Thank you! The Rizeno, ooh, Rizeniro Angel. Rizeniro Angel. Oh my god, I'm so bad with names. But thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. I was just doing a walkthrough of how to make your own glove pattern. Um, by tracing your hand. I just went through the process of doing it with pencil. I'm about to do the same exact process again, but with a marker. Like, because you can choose to either do it with pencil or marker. I like pencil because you can erase, um, but it can be done with a marker too. I just finished doing the pencil rendition of it, and I was just about to mark my grain line. And the best way to mark your grain line is since I know that I want this pattern to have the most stretch on the fingers and on the wrist, uh, the wrist is already kind of diagonal. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. Cause like when you're trying to like rebrand yourself and like make things all the same, yeah, it it gets a little tricky, but. Yes, marking the grain line for this is a, is, is kind of easy. Um, this seam allowance down here is slightly on a bias, um, but not really. Um, but I want to make sure that these fingers are on a place where it's stretched. And I know that the fabric that I have has a lot of stretch across the side, the side of it. So I want to make sure that it does that. So I have to tilt it. Ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. <laughs> it's a really good name. You know, it really is. So I move the pattern ever so slightly. Just so, so that this seam allowance is actually on a bias, which is the largest stretch that we have. And these parts of the fingers lay on the cross grain the way that I want. And once I know that that is where I want it, I can draw in my grain line straight up and down. Uh, doo -doo -doo. It's, it's a little tricky because I'm not using, you know what I should do? I should use my board. I'd be smarter. I'd be smarter to use my, this board here. You can see it just a little bit more. Okay, so yes, right now our glove pattern is facing up and down this way. And if we were to make the glove this way, it'd be fine. It wouldn't stretch 
in all the places that we want unless we were using like a four-way stretch material. Um, but if we want to use something that only has stretch in one direction, especially across the grain line, we want to move the pattern. So I have it straight lined up straight up and down with my board. And now I'm turning it about like oh, less than 45 degrees, like 30 degrees, 20 degrees, unknown. Ooh, ooh, 17 away from 50, from being affiliated. <laughs> so close, so close. So yeah, so we're taking this pattern and turning it ever so slightly, ever so slightly, just slightly askewed, so that we can have an actual straight gray line. And I'm following the straight up and down lines that I have on my board so that I know that I'm actually drawing a straight line. Um, it's actually kind of hard to tell. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm actually just going to fold the paper. <laughs> fold the paper to the line that I want. Because I technically can't see it. Oh, all right. Now that I folded my paper, I now have my grain line. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, the gray line is ever so slightly going to be, it's ever so slight. So now we have our grain line. Grain line. And that is the finished glove pattern. I should have timed how long that took. That probably took like 10 minutes <laughs> to fully draw out everything. That's how you do it on pencil. Marker. I already traced out my hand in marker earlier. So we're just going to draw our lines again. Oh, little baby. Little mama. Ooh, I drew my knuckles a little bit. Um, a little weird this time. So I'm going to just go in between the marks that I drew because they weren't straight lines. I want to make the lines that I draw parallel to my finger, to the direction of my fingers. And I have some weird hecking fingers. <laughs> okay. With marker, it's so much simpler. It's, it's less steps. But sometimes you're just not around a marker, or you have a dead, a dying marker like I do. Um, I usually have more pencils around me than markers, but anyway. So I've drawn my lines of uh, of where my fingers are going, of where my glove is going to stop, and I also marked the crevice of where my fingers end. So that I know where my cut line needs to stop. So the simplest way to do this glove pattern is, yeah, you won't have to draw in the um, seam allowances as much. Because it's a little hard to do with a chunky marker. So what you want to do is you want to definitely divide your finger in half. Divide the fingers in half. Like so. And then you essentially already have all the lines that you need drawn. <laughs> the only thing I, the only additional things I would do would be to add a seam allowance here um, and add my seam allowances on the finger. And around the hand. All still an eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch. Oh, come on.
big hunking marker and since it's a sharpie it it smells <laughs> oh it's been a while since i smoked a marker <laughs> especially a sharpie marker holy cow you would think i work with a, a sharpie more but i don't Wow, I have like my knuckles. <laughs> I have very predominant knuckles. I didn't even like register that. Holy cow. Yeah. So like this is pretty much the done pattern. <laughs> I'm measuring in between where I drew for the fingers and it's already at an eighth of an inch only because when I drew the marker line, it was already, a, it already had a 16th of an inch seam allowance or 16th of an inch ease essentially drawn into it by using the marker. So if you wanted to, you can use um, tracing paper to trace the pattern again so that you have a more final one. But since all the lines are already pretty much drawn. You can just cut it out. Hi, little baby. So the kitty's under my feet right now. <laughs> she's she's just being a little curious. I don't know. I don't know what's underneath the table right now, actually. What you looking at, little mama? Hi. She might want some attention. She might want some attention from me. But baby, I'm streaming. Then you just cut, cut, and cut. Cut that off. Cut that off. And there you have it. That's one glove pattern making a marker. Oh, I totally forgot to draw the grain line. So I'll show you how to draw the grain line on, on here. So like I mentioned before, I have it straight everywhere. Uh, I actually want this seam to be slightly on the bias. And I want these fingers to be on the cross grain. Since I want them on the cross grain, that means following this straight line across. So I tilt it so that majority of the fingers are matched up to this across line. And now this line is slightly on a bias. And that will give me the appropriate stretch that I want so that my heckin' hands can fit in the glove. So now I am going to draw in my grain line so that I know exactly where I need to put the pattern on my fabric. There you go. Glove pattern. Glove pattern in two different ways. So you can pick your poison on how you want to do it. I did my method. I used this pattern doing a pencil. So I had to take that extra step to add the um, ease before I added in my seam allowance because the lead of a pencil is very thin. Versus this pattern where all I had to do is draw the tracing line once and just drew in my seam allowances afterwards. It's a lot faster doing it with marker. But um, I think you get cleaner lines when you use a pencil. So pick your poison. At the end of the day, it's all getting stitched together and it shouldn't make too much of a difference. Maybe there might be a fit difference. Maybe, 
I don't know. Let me compare the, the patterns. So this is the one I did. This is the one I did with pencil. Let's compare. I did, I did trace my hand differently. That is definitely apparent. Uh, I'm trying to compare how much of a difference there is. There actually really isn't much of a difference with how big my fingers came out um, with each, with each uh, pattern. Yeah, I pretty much have the same exact seam allowance I would need for, for both patterns. Um, the only thing that's kind of funky right now is how I trace my hands because I just trace them differently. But yeah, two ways, two different ways to make a glove pattern by tracing your hands with some extra steps and explanations in it because I didn't have them and I needed them. So...